Welcome to week six of Cultures in Conflict. In chapter six, we start off with an introduction to some capacities and skills for us to use to facilitate and deepen intercultural conflict resolution. The primary purpose of this chapter is to help us prepare for the challenges of encountering differences and change by providing concrete, specific tools to bridge difference. This tool rollout will include three important and necessary capacities and nine specific skills that give these capacities expression. The first capacity for intercultural conflict resolution we are introduced to is the capacity of flexibility. We also learned there are three skills associated with this capacity, which include the skills of interrupting patterns, sitting with discomfort, and dancing with surprises. The capacity of flexibility means exactly what it says. It says we must remain open to difference as we encounter others. It means we suspend judgment and perceiving with the spirit of inquiry, to become aware or conscious of something by inquiry, and to try to understand another's point of view. To do this, one does not have to abandon their core beliefs, but simply create space to try to see it from another's viewpoint. The first skill we can use to promote the capacity of flexibility is the skill of interrupting patterns. Each of us has a set of norms by which we view what is right and wrong in life. It's through these norms that we, yes, all of us, judge any given situation. It's through these judgments we tend to set life patterns by which we live and feel comfortable and often pass negative judgments on the life patterns of others whom we don't agree with. By utilizing the skill of interrupting patterns, we make a conscious effort to disrupt our life patterns and to try to look at one another's life patterns from their point of view. Basically, as the old saying goes, we take a walk in the other person's shoes. To do this, interaction must occur. It's through this interaction that the experience becomes positive and we find a way to align it without existing understandings and thus create a new life pattern, which does not necessarily mean you have to agree with the issue, but that you can see it from another's viewpoint. One last thing, developing the capacity of flexibility requires that we continually adjust our mental life patterns in evolving, fluid, and dynamic ways. To do this, we learn we must ask ourselves four questions whenever we are encountering a life pattern that is in conflict with our own. First, why do I hold this belief or view? Where does it come from? How does this belief influence me in my life? Does this belief inter interfere with my ability to embrace a spirit of inquiry? What exactly is the opposing view? How does it make sense to others to hold this view? And what factors reinforce this view for the ones who hold it? Otherwise, one must step away from one's perspective, which again does not mean you have to abandon it, and try to see the issue from the other side. Are there factors which you don't experience that support this view? And with this alternative belief, what would my wor world look and feel like? Does it make your world more uncomfortable and or uncertain, or would it expand it and make you open to multiple perspectives and people living in a more diverse way? Or does it even affect you at all? The second skill we can use to promote the capacity of flexibility is the skill of sitting with discomfort. All this skill means is the more intensely we feel about an issue, especially one that has a countering perspective, keeps this issue in our awareness. By sitting with discomfort or keeping the foreign concept in our awareness, we by default give ourselves the time and space to reflect on the concept and our actions related to that concept. It is natural for us to try to remove discomfort and unpleasant feelings from our daily experiences, but if we can learn to use and recognize those feelings from our daily experiences, we can start to cue reflection that will allow us the opportunity to move toward the capacity of flexibility in our thoughts and actions. The sk third skill we can use to promote the capacity of flexibility is the skill of dancing with surprise. Usually when confronted with surprise, we tend to be momentarily still as we reflect on how we will deal with the surprise. All this skill suggests is when confronted with a life pattern that is different than our own, we should simply welcome it or dance with it, allow it to influence our feelings, our thoughts, and our actions. This will create an openness to the other person's point of view and in all probability eliminate or at least reduce the possibility of a tense interaction. The second capacity for intercultural conflict resolution we are introduced to is the capacity of creative engagement. 
Basically, all the capacity of creative engagement means is that we make the decision to be inventive in encountering and interacting with others. We can do this by keeping open the possibility of using conflict as a generator for positive change, learning, and growth. To do this, we must positively engage others who have different perspectives and beliefs from our own. It's through this positive engagement that aspects of conflict can become clear and allow for better means making and understanding across all differing perspectives. We also learn there are three skills associated with this capacity, which include the skills of metaphor, storytelling, and ritual. The first skill we can use to promote the capacity of creative engagement is the skill of metaphor. A metaphor is nothing more than a figure of speech, where a word, phrase, or even a story is applied to an object or action to which it is not literally applicable. Any, and a good example might be when a person says something like, she has a heart of gold. Does this statement actually mean the person's heart is made of gold? Well, of course not. It's simply saying the person is a good person, one who always has the best of intentions towards others. Gold is something that everyone values, and thus everyone values this person's goodness. That being said, we learn through the use of metaphors that we can also help others see a differing point of view from their own. The second skill we can use to promote the capacity of creative engagement is the skill of storytelling. Storytelling, much like metaphors, helps those in conflict focus on what's connecting them rather than what's dividing them as they transition through the story from being rivals to identities where they can understand and share. Those identities might include those of men and women, fathers and mothers, workers, and just being part of a community. Storytelling can help open everyone up through the connection, the mutual understanding of the story for more open conversations and advancement towards further understanding and creative engagement. The third skill we can use to promote the capacity of creative engagement is the skill of ritual. A ritual are simply times where we take a step outside of our ordinary life, and we recognize or observe something. This could include a birthday party, participating in a religious ceremony, or simply spending some time in a quiet place reflecting. Basically, rituals help us observe, mark, and transition changes in our identity, meaning, or status. It's through rituals whereby group cohesiveness is reinforced and can also be used to help facilitate acceptance of difference. Besides that, rituals help connect people to differing realms of identity, values, um, establish smooth communications between rivals, and help shift attentions to positive aspirations and connective thinking. Rituals can also be used to mark achievement and create bookmarks by which future successes or failures can be measured. The third and final capacity for intercultural conflict resolution we are introduced to is the capacity of momentum. Momentum means regardless of setbacks or difficulty, we never give up on learning about ourselves and others or engaging all difficulties, no matter how challenging. During this process, we must understand a couple givens. First, momentum means continuous motion, never giving up. Next, momentum is not always in a straight line. Sometimes we may have to double back to get new information and or understanding. Next, we learn that there are three skills associated with this capacity, which include the skills of revealing uncertainty, pausing, and intuition. The first skill we can use to promote the capacity of momentum is the skill of revealing uncertainty. Basically, when we reveal uncertainty, we are revealing that we are human and we don't have all the answers. By doing this, we are humbling ourselves and reveling in our interdependence on others. By acknowledging that we don't have all the answers and don't know how to proceed, invites others to share responsibly for the process outcomes and ultimately our relationships with each other. The second skill we can use to promote the capacity of momentum is the skill of pausing. Trying to address conflict can be physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually draining, causing those involved to become tired, disheartened, and even demoralized. Sometimes what we are trying to do addresses a conflict is not working, and as a result, momentum is not happening. It is at these times that we must recognize the issue and just pause. This gives all involved time to rest, reflect, and consider where the conflict is at that moment. Sometimes pausing is difficult, especially in situations where there is a lot at stake. To help with a pause, it is sometimes helpful for the group to engage in a physical activity, such as a walk, hike, or anything that allows everyone to temporarily unplug, get some fresh air, and rest their brains. The third skill we can use to promote the capacity of momentum is the skill of intuition. Simply put, intuition is knowing without necessarily knowing 
how we know what we know. Another term for this process might be when you have a gut feeling about something. A gut feeling is a little voice that is deep inside us that tells us something. Perhaps it is something that at the time does not even make sense, but we listen to it simply because we feel that it is correct. Very often, especially in situations where little progress is being made, intuition will allow us to shift our momentum by giving us a message that we need to pause and reevaluate the direction where we are going, giving us hunches or our gut feelings about better ways to proceed. As always, remember to read your case study thoroughly this week and continue to be mindful of your week eight final paper. Have a wonderful week.